Good evening. I am Elder Stephen Thomas, and I will be teaching our midweek Bible study on today, Wednesday, December the 1st in the year 2021. I certainly appreciate you all tuning in with us as we study God's Word. We're going to continue in a study of our uh, midweek Bible study. We are still in the gospel according to John, and we will continue where we left off last time with the beginning of chapter 15. So we will begin today's midweek Bible study at the gospel according to John chapter 15, and we will start at verse number one. Uh, we certainly appreciate you all uh, tuning in and being a part of this ministry. As we are preparing to go into God's word and the study of his word, uh, we ask the Lord to please be one in the midst as he lead us down through the treasures of his word. Amen. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord, we appreciate this one more opportunity to come out and to try to share your word and to try to rightly divide your word. God, we ask that you please be one in the midst and that you lead us down through your word. Lord, we ask that your Holy Ghost energize in all of your believers that we may learn what you would have for us to learn from your lesson today. God, we have some sick among us. Lord, you know every situation. God, we do not have to call out any names, but God, you know. We're so glad that we serve a God that is all-knowing. And Lord, we petition you, and Lord, we lay them up before you, Lord, knowing that you're going to do anything but fail. And God, we, we have some bereave among us. Lord, please continue to touch, continue to comfort as only you can, as only the one who loves us so much that you gave your one and only son to pay a ransom for us while we were still yet sinners, you allowed the Christ to come into the world and to pay a ransom for us. And God, we thank you for that. And Lord, if there's someone that does not know you in the pardon of their sin, God, touch them wherever they are and let them know that they're going to need a Savior on their side. Lord, this and many of the blessings we ask in your Son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As we look at our lesson today, you know, we're going back and we're continuing with the study of John. And we are, and as we had studied the last time, we were in chapter 14. And as we know, with chapter 14, it starts off with Jesus talking to his disciples and he was sharing with them that he was going to go away from them as he has shared. In, in, verse thir in chapter 13. And now he's sharing with them that he's going to leave. And that's why in chapter 14, it starts off, you know, let your heart not, you know, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus was talking to his disciples who were Jewish men who had been raised Jews and they believed in God. And Jesus was reassuring them that they should believe in him. And as we had continued to study in God's word and as we were leaving, Chapter 14, Jesus was telling them about that he had to go away and that if he went away, he would pray to the Father that the Father would send another comforter. This, this would be a comforter just like Jesus, which lets us know that it's going to be the comforter of the Holy Ghost who is part of the Trinity, part of the Godhead. And Jesus had declared and had promised to them that he would do that and that he and that and that it was a necessity for him to go back to the Father. We also studied and understand uh, and understood that as we were looking at verse number 23, uh, this is after Judas had asked him uh, a question. This is not Judas Iscariot who asked him a question. Lord, how is it that, that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? In verse 23, Sheer, Jesus told them that if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and he will come unto him and make our abode and, and make our abode with him. And we understood that this abode here in verse 22 meant, meant to make our house or our home there. And so we know then that as Jesus has declared that the God is going to come and take residence in all of his believers, which is who are all the people who have believed and accepted God's plan of salvation. So we have God's Holy Spirit, God's Holy Ghost living inside of us who will lead and guide us down through our lives and through all of the various things and bring all things to our remembrance so that we will be able to have the reassurance 
assurance and knowing that we are part of God's army. As we continued on in verse number, uh, down through verse number 31 of uh, chapter 14, uh, chapter 31, uh, verse 31 said, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do. Meaning that Jesus is, going to, Jesus is sharing that he has done all the things that his Father had commanded him to do, and that his disciples are going to do things also that Jesus commanded them to do. And then Jesus told his disciples, he says, Arise, let us go hence. And this let us go hence is now, they are leaving the upper room, and they are now going to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Lord is taking every opportunity to leave and to, and to provide to his disciples all the things that they would know and that they would need. Jesus is using all of his time because he knows that Judas Iscariot has already gone over to uh, make a deal to try to turn Jesus over to those sinful men, just as Jesus had declared would occur. And so Jesus is now going over to the Garden of Gethsemane. And so while going over to the garden, he's still taking the opportunity to teach his disciples, to share with his disciples so that they would have everything and, and that they would be equipped to know just what was going on. Jesus has already declared to his disciples that the things that, that was going to happen, he was sharing with them that these things are going to happen so that his disciples will know that he predicted, that he prophesied this and that this is not a surprise to him. Because for this reason, he came into the world to pay our sin debt. Amen. So now we're going to pick up with chapter 15, and we're going to start off with the first four, the first four verses, the first four, the first four verses of chapter 15, verse one through four. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he pruneth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Amen. Now the Lord is sharing, now the Lord is using something that they would know. They will know and understand because they understood how vines work. They understood how grapes work. And so Jesus is now going to share with them about being a vine and about them bringing forth fruit. Now, and as we look at verse number one, Jesus declares, he uses, starts off with what? I am. And when we see the I am, that's just how God, when God called uh, Moses from the burning bush, he said what? I am that I am. Whenever Jesus uses the I am, they knew and understood that this was sharing with them about that he was connected to God the Father. And so Jesus says in verse number one, I am the true vine. And when we see the word true, this true here means genuine. There will be others that will come around and will try to, try to deceive and to be a deceiver. But Jesus is letting his disciples know that he is the true vine. He is the genuine vine. This is the vine that, as Jesus had declared, that no man can go to the Father except by him. No one can go to God except through Jesus Christ. No matter how much man will try to do, we have the account of the people when they were out there in the plains of Babylon that they said that they would build a tower up to heaven and God looked down and confused the language. We also know that on the day of Pentecost, which is going to come after Jesus' resurrection, that on the day of Pentecost, God was able to, uh, to, to come back and where everybody heard the gospel preached in their native tongue so that God combined all the languages back together to share that this is how we get to God. So Jesus is sharing that he is the true vine. Now, as Jesus shares in verse number one of chapter 15, that he is the true vine, Jesus then goes and says something about his father. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. The husband man meaning that that is the vine dresser. That is someone that is tending to the vine. That, and what Jesus is sharing, as we recall, 
Jesus had declared that he came to do the will of his father. All the words that he did were the words that his father had told him to do. So Jesus was doing everything that God had told him, which means that Jesus being the true vine, but God is the husband man. God is the vine dresser. God is the gardener. God is the one that is taking care of the vine. And so with Jesus sharing and declaring these words for us, we now have a picture and an understanding that Jesus is the true vine and God is the one who is doing, who is the uh, husband man or who is the vine dresser or who is the gardener. God is the one that is overseeing everything. So we know that God the Father is almighty. We know that God the Father is overseeing everything. Nothing goes on on this planet. Nothing goes on in this universe without our Lord and Savior, without God almighty knowing and allowing these things to happen. So Jesus here is declaring this, uh, this relationship here in chapter chapter 15, verse number one. We then look at verse number two. Now, Jesus is going and he's sharing with them about the branches. We know that the vine is the main thing. The vine is the main part of the, uh, of the vineyard. It is the main vine. And so here, verse number two shares with us, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. The, the branch would be an offshoot, something that is that that is connected to the vine, that says it is connected to the vine, but and and so as that branch comes out, Jesus makes a declaration. You can be connected to the vine, but notice what it says. Jesus, Jesus declares, every branch in me, the branch that is in Jesus, said, Jesus says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. He taketh away. If we are saying that we are connected to Jesus, but we are not bearing any fruit, it says that God is going to what? Take it away because that's what verse number two shares with us. Verse number two shares with us that every branch, and, the, and then we know that as, as individuals, we would be a branch. And so when we look at it, Jesus declares every branch in me, that's every branch that's connected with Jesus, what? That beareth not fruit, which means we are supposed to be bearing some fruit. And what is fruit? Fruit would be that we are bringing others to Christ, that we are sharing the word of the gospel to get others to quit this walk of life as far as being part of the world and to become part of God's army. The fruit that Jesus is talking about is the individual. So Jesus declares that every branch that is in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. God is going to be the one to take it away. And then the latter part of verse number two, it goes with that and says, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges, he pruneth. Now, when and what that's saying, that means that you got two branches that are connected to the vine. One branch did not bear any fruit, and God is going to do something to that branch. God is going to take it away. But the branch that is bearing fruit, notice what God is going to do with that branch. God is going to prune it. For those who have had some trees, some fruit trees, or some other things that bear fruit, when you when you prune it and cut it back a little bit, it then brings forth as Jesus is going to going to declare the latter part of verse number two. He says what that it will bring forth more fruit. So let us again continue to look at the latter part of verse number two of chapter fifteen. It says, "And every branch that beareth forth that beareth fruit, he prune it." that it may bring forth more, more fruit. In other words, when we look at this, it is showing that the vine dresser, it is showing that the gardener, it is showing that God the Father is going to look and he's going to make an, and he is making an assessment because he sees that there are fruit growing on this right here. And so what does God do? He's going to prune it. And the gardener, when the gardener prunes something, that is showing that the gardener loves that particular branch because he is what? tending to it. He's not allowing it to just grow uh, haphazardly and to grow at its own rate. But what does the gardener do? What does the vine dresser do? The vine dresser prunes it. And so when the vine dresser, and when the vine dresser prunes it, he has a purpose for it. So when God starts blessing, when God starts doing as we do things, God will continue to bless. God will continue to give us the things that we need. Because as it says here in verse number two, he pruneth it for a purpose. And what is that purpose? That it may bring forth 
more fruit. In other words, when we're doing things and we have some fruit, God is taking notice and then God is going to allow other things to come, ab come about the pruning that will then be able to bring forth much fruit. God will be able to do to use different people in their ministries that they are able to do more and more and more as God sees fit. So when we are working within the Lord and we're doing what God would have us to do, God will then continue to bless and continue to prune it so that we can bring forth much fruit because that is what God's intent is, is for the, for, uh, as we're going to look at how God is going to be glorified later on here in chapter 15. So God is going to prune the branches that are bringing forth fruit so that they can bring forth more fruit. Now, let us take a look at verse number three of chapter 15. Verse number three says, now ye are clean. Now, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's talking about them being clean. He's not talking about the, the dirt washed, up, washed off of them, but he's talking about a spiritual clean. For he says, now ye are clean, and he says, clean how? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. So when he looks and he shares with them that, he's, that they are clean through, this through here is because of. Jesus shared with them the word of, of God. Jesus shared with them what God wants them to know. Jesus had been laying it all out to them because as they are walking from the upper room out to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus let them know everything because he knows that his time with them is going to be limited because he knows that the evil evil one is, trying, is going to make his attack. He's using Judas and because Jesus had already said that and these evil men are going to be turned over to Jesus but Jesus is going to be tried from judgment hall to judgment hall as we will talk about later on in, 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 the, in the gospel according to John. But as we are seeing here in verse number three Jesus says, now ye are clean. The disciples are clean because of the word which, which Jesus has spoken unto them. Jesus told them everything and they are clean, meaning that they have a good understanding and, and, that, and that they know what God is going to do, meaning that they, they know because Jesus has told them whether they are accepting it right now. That is coming, coming up a little bit later because we understand Jesus was telling them what's going to happen, but then it still had to transpire for them to be a full witness of it so, they could, so that the Holy Spirit could bring back to their recollection that what Jesus had already prophesied, this is the fulfillment of it. Now, let us look at verse number four. Verse number four shares with us that Jesus is now going to encourage his disciples. He's encouraging them because one, in verse number one, Jesus said that I am the true vine. And so with Jesus being the true vine and that there is no other way to get back to God and that for us to be connected and for us to bring forth good fruit or much fruit or any fruit, we must be connected to the vine. So when we look here at verse number four, verse number four says, that abide in me. And we know that abide would mean to continue in me or to be in me or to live in me. And so it just means to be with me. So when we see the word abide, that's continuing. And so abide in me is what Jesus is declaring. He says, abide in me and I in you, meaning that we will be connected. Because remember, Jesus is using the analogy of the vine and then using the analogy of the branch. We know that a branch comes off of the main line of the branch, and the main line, as long as the branch is connected to the main line, then it can do some things. But then we know if we cut off something from the main line, it's just a branch. And I know that the branch can start out a little bit with some leaves on it, but over time, it will wither away because it it, it is not connected to the main vine. It's not connected to the power source. So as we continue with verse number three, verse number four, when Jesus declared to his disciples, abide in me and I in you. Jesus is declaring to them to continue in me and as I will continue in you. And then Jesus says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. A branch, if you cut off a branch from the main vine, no matter how much water, no matter, no matter, no matter whether you sink it into a vase and drop in the things that they will say, oh, this is the great fertilizer, whether some will say, oh, drop an aspirin in it, some say, oh, drop whatever it is, no matter what we drop 
into the water that the branch is in, that branch will not have the nourishment or be able to bring forth any fruit. We cannot cut off a limb off of an apple tree and think that that limb is going to bring forward and then going to bear any fruit off of apples. And so Jesus is declaring that if a branch that is not connected to the main vine, it cannot bear any fruit. And so that lets us know we cannot bear any fruit bringing people to Christ, telling people about the Lord on our own. We must be connected to Jesus. Everything that we do has got to be in relationship and connected to Jesus because everything that we're doing is based upon him, based upon our Savior. And so when we, if we try to set up something and to do it just on our own, it, 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 it cannot pass be, uh, or be successful because we're not connected to the main power source. And what that tells us is what are our motivations of why we are doing things. If we're doing things of lifting, trying to lift ourselves up, oh, some people will join in and all that, but it will not stand. We must be trying to lift up the name of Jesus Christ because that is the thing. Because no matter what we say down here, we're all human beings and we all have fallen short. But we've got to be connected to Jesus who is the true vine. And that's what he is declaring here in verse number four. So he so he continues on and, and, and he continues on and shares with us that uh, we that no one that the branch cannot bear fruit of itself and, it, and so he goes on to say to remind us except it abide in the vine meaning except we abide and say, except we continue in the vine except we are connected to the vine we cannot bear any fruit and he says and then after he says this he says. No more can ye except ye abide in me, meaning that we cannot abide, we cannot bear any fruit, we cannot do anything unless we are connected to the true vine. We cannot bear, even though we are a branch, if we are a branch, and when we must be connected to the vine for us to be successful, for us to bear any fruit, because we cannot bear any fruit on our own. All of the fruit, all of the increase, everything will come from God because everything comes from God and through Jesus Christ who declared that no one can come to the Father except through him. So we now have looked at Jesus giving the analogy of using the the vine and the branches of how the branch, if it's going to have any fruit, if it's going to bear any fruit, it must be connected to the vine. And then he shared with us that if we are connected to the vine, God is going to do an assessment of all of the branches. And when God does the assessment of the branches, God's going to look and see. And God, he knows what he's looking at. He is the gardener. He is the vine dresser. And when he look and see this branch, and if this branch is not bearing any fruit, this branch is sucking up nourishment. This branch is doing everything, but it is not bringing forth any fruit. The Jesus said that the husband man will cut it off because as we look up here in, in verse number two, it says, again, just reminding us that every branch, in verse number two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. The gardener is going to take it away. But if, we, if the gardener looks at it, who is God the Father, and see that we have some fruit, God is going to show his love and his mercy and do some pruning on us. And he's going to do the pruning so that we can bring forth even more fruit. And those are the blessings of various ministries that's going on. When God sees that the ministries are working and the ministries are bringing forth fruit, God then continues to bless. As our pastor oftentimes talks about, God does not make any bad investment. God knows who to invest in because he knows what we're going to do with the investments that he give us. Amen. So now, we now have, an, have a reasonable understanding of the verses 1 through 4. Now let us take a look at the next four verses. We're going to take a look at verses 5 through 8. Amen. Now, when we look at uh, chapter 15, verses 5 through 8, and it reads, I am the vine. Ye are, ye are the, the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he, he is east forth as a, he, he, is, he is cast forth, sorry about that, 
If a man, verse number six, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Therein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. So as we're looking at verses 5 through 8, with verse Jesus tells us in verse number 5, Jesus says again, I am the vine. Now, earlier he told us he was the true vine, and, and we know that Jesus is the true vine. But here he just says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He's reminding his disciples what their role is. He's reminding the disciples how things are. He's reminding the disciples that he is the vine, he is the true vine, and that his disciples, his followers, are the branches, and branches must be connected to the vine. Jesus then goes and declares at the middle part of verse number 5, Jesus says, he that abideth in me, he that abideth in we, and I shared that abideth means continue. Anyone that is continuing, that's going to remain with the Lord, that's going to stay connected to Jesus Christ, going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He that abideth in me and I in him, that we have a connection, that some, some people have the song that says we're twisted, tied up, tangled up in Jesus, and that's what, just what we're sharing here, is that if we are tied up, tangled up, connected to Jesus, that we are, we are part of it, and that if we abide in Jesus, Jesus says he will abide in us. And so that's what he says here in verse number, uh, verse five, he said, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same. So if we are abiding in the Lord and the Lord is in us, then there is going to be some signs. Notice this sign here in verse number five. Jesus said, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And what Jesus is saying, if we are abiding in him and he is abiding in us, we are going to bear some fruit. Amen. So that lets us know if we are connected to Jesus, our lifestyle, the things that we are doing, we will be a light into a dark world. We will be ones that is bringing forth fruit because people, we don't know who's noticing us. But if we are living a life that is connected to Jesus, someone is noticing and someone will be making a change and following into the pathway in which we're leading to Christ. Because we believe it or not, people are noticing, people are watching. And so we want to lead people to the Lord by the life that we live. So Jesus is here declaring here, verse number five, that if we abide in him and he is abiding in us, we shall, and, he, and we shall, as, as he says, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And then Jesus says, how can we bring forth much fruit? For without me, ye can do nothing. He's reminding his disciples that as they go forward, as this ministry is going to continue on, Jesus is saying that we must be connected to him and that if we are connected to him, we can bring forth much fruit and for that we can do nothing. We cannot bring anything without the Lord being a part of it. Hence why when we start, I know that some may say, oh, it's the same old prayer all the time. Some may say, oh, what are you doing? All but if we're not connected to God, if we're not asking God's Holy Spirit to lead and guide us whenever we look, whenever we try to study his word, then we're just reading words. We want to have a spiritual encounter in everything that we're doing for the Lord because the Lord is using us. We are studying a living word, and this living word will give us what we need for today, tomorrow, for things coming forth because as we read God's word, God is using us. He is working with us as good soil. We are all just little clay vessels, but we want to be a clay vessel that is pliable, that the Lord will shape and use us for whatever he has for us. And so as we are then studying his word, he is molding us. And then we can be able to bring forth much fruit. Why? Because we are connected to the vine. Now, let us look at verse number six. Verse number six shares with us if a man abide, now Jesus is declaring now, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. If someone is not abiding in the Lord, they are not continuing with the Lord. They are not connected with the Lord. They may, and we know what abiding is again. 
Jesus says, if a man abideth not in me and abideth and not keeping God's word, they're not keeping Jesus' word, they're not continuing in Jesus. So they and the person, the man is not abiding in me. Jesus says he is cast forth as a branch, cast forth as a branch, meaning that we've cut the branch off. The branch is no part of it. And that branch will wither up and, dry, and be dry. And now notice the next part. Jesus says, will be cast forth as a branch and is withered. And the withered is just what I was sharing. It will become dry. It will become brittle because it's not connected to the power source. It is a dead stick. It's just a dead stick. We, some people will call that kindling. And so now that we see this dead stick that is, that, that is there, it is withered. And men do what? Men gather them and cast them into the fire. Burn up because it's of no more value. And so, it just, and, and, and as Jesus says, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And so, if we're going to be a pliable, if we're going to be a live uh, branch, we must remain and we must be connected to the vines, the true vine, because that is how we're going to get our energy. We, that's how we're going to get our power source. We must be connected to the power source. We cannot, you know, if we are cut off from the, from the true vine, then we are just a stick that's over there. Oh, the stick will have some leaves on it for a while, but that stick is going to wither and dry up and then be cast into fire. So we should always desire to be connected to the true vine. Verse number seven. Verse number seven shares with us, if ye abide in, now Jesus is declaring to, to his disciples, if ye, now notice he used the if a man and now he's using if ye because he's talking to his disciples that just as God talks to us. We are free mortal agents. We can make decisions of what we're going to do, whose team are we on, what are we going to do. God gives us that and so we, and so we have a choice and we make that choice just like Joshua did when he, said, when he says what? Uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As we stand and declare what? I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be connected to Jesus. That is a choice that individuals must make. Hence why we always talk about whether or not someone has accepted God's plan of salvation because each and every one of us will be accountable and must be accountable for the sin in which we have done. But for us to be accountable of the sin that we have done, we're going to need a kinsman redeemer to pay our debt because our sin debt is death. And so, but Jesus has come and paid our sin debt if we accept it. So as we continue back here with verse number seven, Jesus says now to his disciples, if ye abide in me and my words, if we abide in Jesus and the teachings in which he has done, the teachings where he's shown us that, and given us the example of showing love to one another, the teaching and example that we are to follow God's word, the, the, the examples of what Jesus gave when he talked to the disciples and did all of his teachings with the various parables was so that we would understand what God would have us to do. So again, in verse number seven, Jesus says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. See, Jesus is saying if we got to be connected to him and then the words in which he's been teaching us, they got to abide in us. Jesus then comes and declares something for us. If we're connected to Jesus and we have his words and they abide in us, Jesus says, ye shall ask what you will. That means that nothing is off limits. Nothing is beyond reason. Jesus says that we shall, as we continue verse, verse number seven, he says ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you and when we think about the unto you that means it will be done for you Jesus is going to do when we pray to God and asking him to open up doors that we can have a stronger ministry that we can do things that we can make a better uh, example within our community where we can make a better uh, effectiveness around our cities and around the, the, the state and the nation. God will bless that if we are asking it in God's name, in Jesus' name, because Jesus wants us to be successful. So here again, we've got to be connected to him, and so we've got to be doing the ministries in which he has called us to do. Amen. So that's what Jesus is declaring here for us in verse number seven. Now, as we look at verse number eight, Jesus is going and he says, herein 
is my father glorified? Jesus is declaring that his father is going to be glorified if we, are, if we abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in us. If we're doing the things that Jesus has told us to do, God gets the glory because God gave us his son so that we could have a right to the tree of life. God gave us his son so that he could pay the sin debt that we owe. God loved us so much so that he gave his son. And by us being the example, by us accepting God's plan of salvation, God gets the glory. God gets the glory for us while we are doing the things that God would have us to do because God seeks and desires great and wonderful things for us. So in verse number eight again, Jesus says, herein is my father glorified that ye what? That ye bear much fruit. God's going to get the glory by the things in which we are doing, by the lifestyles that we're living, by the things that we're doing so that the world will, will, will fall, so that people will fall out of the world and fall in and be part of God's army. That's how God's going to get the glory. God's going to get the glory because he's done everything. He's given his son. His son has paid the ransom for us. But if we do our part to tell the dying world and to tell boys and girls, men and women, about a savior then God will get the glory because we will be bringing forth much fruit that's what verse 8 says so bear in my so Jesus says verse number 8 herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples if we're going to be Jesus's disciples we must bear fruit. We must bring forward some fruit. We've got to be about God's mission. We've got to be able to, that Jesus, when, the, when, when God the Father, the dresser, the, the groomsman, the vine dresser, when he looks at us, he is then able to see that we are bringing forth some fruit, that we are bringing people to Christ, that we're living a life that people are looking at and taking notice of, then God will prune us and so that we will then be able to bring forth much fruit. So all the ministries in which we're doing, if you're singing in the choir, if you're urchin on the floor, if you're, if you're officers, whatever, if, you're, if you're godly women, if ministers, whatever we're doing, if we're doing it for Christ, if we're doing it for the Lord, and people's lives are being changed, people have have quit the walk of life and, are, and have a stronger relationship and a stronger walk with the Lord. They are learning more about God. They are trusting God more. Those are all the various fruits that, that is being done that when, G, when God looks at it, then God says that, and God will then bless the things in which we are doing. When people are making their phone calls to the sick and shut in, all of these things, they are helping toward the ministry to encourage one another and God will continue to encourage and God will continue to use them and continue to help them. Now, one would say, well, how is the, per how is the pruning going to be done? Or how can God prune? If it, and just using the example that I just gave, if someone's ministry is calling people on the telephone and sharing with them and giving them words of encouragement, God will continue to let their phones still be able to do things, still be able to have the right phone, or still have the right connection. God will work things out so that you will be able to reach out and be able to connect with more and more people because that's how God is using you in the ministry. Remember, all of us are make all of us make up God's army. All of us make up the members of the body, as Paul had talked about. You know, all of us are not hands. All of us are not feet. Because if we was, we'd just be one thing, all hands, or something like that. But God needs each and every one of us to do whatever we do. Some of us are better, or some of them, I'm sorry, are better at singing than us. Others. Amen. And so God using voices as he sees fit. God is going to do the blessing and continue on so that his ministry will be able to grow. And as God is using us, he is going to prune us so that we can then bring forth much fruit. Amen. And I see the time. And so we will stop there at verse number eight. Sorry, I only got through eight verses. Amen. We will get through uh, uh, chapter 15. Uh, uh, we did one through eight, and so we'll pick up next week. Amen. I'll be teaching next week also. Amen. Uh, and we'll pick up at verse number nine. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just giving Pastor a break. Amen. So uh, may we pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for being one in the midst, and we thank you for leading us down through your word. God, we trust and master, we're praying that we have, I've stood to try to teach your word correctly, and Lord, try to do it right. And God, if I said anything that is correct, 
God, I give you all the credit and all the glory. Lord, if I said anything that was not correct, God, please forgive me for it. And God, please open it up to my mind and to my heart that I may be a better servant for you, Lord. Lord, bless all the sick and shut in. Bless all those in bereavement. And Lord, bless our nation. And Lord, you see all the things that's going on with the variant and all of the different things. God, touch and have mercy. In this and many of the blessings we ask in your son, Jesus the Christ's name, amen. So again, we appreciate you tuning in with us and being part of our midweek Bible study ministry. May God richly bless you is our prayer. Amen.